Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Devin Adams. I'm a Fortnite instructor here in Tempe, Arizona for Dynamic Worldwide Training Consultants and I record these videos for the people who've taken my class and uh, I'm trying to plow out a whole bunch of them while I have the weekend. So um, anyways, here is my impromptu lab that I've just been throwing everything in the kitchen sink to and in this video we are going to specifically update the firmware in our HA cluster, all right, because well someone asked us to to see it done. So um, now the nice thing about our FortiGates being uh, bound together using their HA solution is that if we throw an image to the uh, FortiGate, the main FortiGate, the primary, uh, it will go ahead and try to the best of its abilities to seamlessly upgrade the cluster and how it accomplishes this by first uh, uh, uploading the image to all the secondaries, then the secondaries take themselves offline, meaning like they, they detach from the from the uh, cluster, all right, and then they'll upgrade themselves, and then once they come back online, okay, the primary then hands over the role to one of the secondaries, so one of the secondaries now becomes a primary, and then it goes ahead and upgrades itself, and then it should be joined back into the cluster. So honestly, guys, when it comes to upgrading the firmware in a cluster, there should be really no in my, as far as I know, considerations that are different uh, other than just upgrading a single FortiGate. Now, with that being said, we still do best practices. Best practices says that we should have physical access to the FortiGate. So if for some reason we need to console in there because something didn't happen uh, the way that we wanted it to, we can still have access. All right. Uh, they also say to read the release notes, do a backup configuration, do maintenance windows, have a rollback plan. All right, guys. So um, I'm just taking those into consideration, right? And I'm just assuming that that is being done. All right. Now, the only other catch that I have here is if the cluster, if your HA cluster is in override mode enabled, that means that the priority number takes precedence over the uptime of the HA cluster. So if you join that FortiGate back into the cluster after it's done upgrading and it has the higher priority number, it will force an unnecessary failover. So before we actually do this, we're going to do a double check on the priority number and make sure that override is set to disable, which is the default. All right. But I showed in an earlier video how we made it... Um, uh, we made the enabled of the override mode to make sure that when we joined FortiGate B here, that it stayed the secondary by adjusting the priority number. So I'm just going to go into my uh, Windows machine here and then log in. All right, so here we go. And as you can see on my dashboard, we're running 5.0 or 6.0.5. All right, now I know for a fact that uh, we are up to 606, okay? Now, for some reason, if the FortiGate doesn't recognize that, I'm not gonna bother troubleshooting it, okay? Instead, I'm just gonna go to the support website and download the out image, but normally, all right, and I'm just gonna assume this is because I'm in a test environment or something like that, it didn't recognize that there was a firmware upgrade option. So, um, anyways, so that's how you can verify it, okay? And also, if you go over here to System and you go to HA, I'm just going to go ahead and verify that my two priority numbers are 128, 128. So I am good there. All right. So, and then for the very last, I'm going to pop this open with the console window. I'm going to do a config system HA. I'm going to do a show here. All right. And override is disabled. And that's what I want. All right because that way we don't have any unnecessary failovers when that primary becomes a secondary, upgrades itself, and then joins back into the cluster. So guys, our expected behavior here, all right, is for the FortiGate to upload the image, send it to the secondaries. The secondaries will then disconnect, upgrade themselves, come back to the cluster, negotiate to become primary, and then the old primary will become a secondary, disconnect itself, upgrade, and then join itself back into the cluster. So um, once again, use best practices, but just because I'm smug like that, I'm gonna go ahead and do a command window here, all right, and see how many packets we lose while doing our firmware upgrade. All right, so I'm gonna ping out to the world. 
So there's there's Google's DNS. And uh, let's see how many packets we actually drop when we do this process. Okay, so first we need to get the firmware image. So if you guys go to your support.fortinet.com, log in with your support contract, go to download, go to firmware, and we're using a flavor of KVM for our FortiGates. All right, so we're going to go to download, and then we're going to pick 6.0, 60, and as you can see, we're up to 606. And then we're going to get the KVM out image. Image. I don't know why I'm talking like that. So, all right, where are you, KVM? Right there's the image we want to upgrade. So we're going to hit. Uh, no, we're not. See the see the OS right there, guys. That is not what I want. My bad. That's if you're doing. Um, that's if you're doing pay-as-you-go services through the hypervisor. All right, let's keep on scrolling. There has to be a KVM up here. All right, there we go. So, uh, 40 gates, VM, 64-bit, KVM, perfect. Out file. Now, the one that has the .zip, that has the uh, virtual machine files in it. This is just the OS image. So, we're going to hit download. All right, once that happens, it's going to go ahead and, uh, well, download. <laughs> so, And then, after that... We go back to our FortiGate, and we go to our system. We go to firmware, okay? And uh, once again, for some reason, it's not seeing that there's an update. So I am going to manually upload this by selecting Upload Firmware Browse. And I'm just going to assume that I made a maintenance window. I read the release notes to make sure that there was nothing that is going to be impacted by this upgrade. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I have console access. All right. So and and follow that best practice. OK, so. But uh, once that gets done downloading, we're going to go to downloads here. OK, and uh, it's still not quite done yet. It's coming over right now. OK, so. How to direct market your beef. That must have been the make internet noise downloading. That. <laughs> All right, here we go. Perfect. So there it is. And it goes, uh, we cannot determine a valid upgrade path. All right. So now normally it will detect that there's an upgrade and give you the release notes URL right here. We're just going to pretend like we did so. So we're going to go ahead and say upgrade. And then it's going to drop the config file. And then it's going to upload the image to the FortiGate, which is then going to upload the image to the secondary. So I'm going to hop over real quick and look at the console port of our secondary FortiGate while this happens and also our main FortiGate. So as you can see here, it sent it to the HA slave. All right. And then here it's saying waiting for the slave to restart. And if we come over to the FortiGate B, which was our secondary, it went ahead and disconnected itself after it received the image, and it's upgrading itself. So it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And the whole time, if we come back over to our Windows machine, all right, and we look at our ping packets here, I mean, we shouldn't be losing anything. Nothing has been lost yet. Now, this weird, like, you know... Uh, latency spikes, guys, is because I'm in a test environment. That has nothing to do with the 48. That has to do with my laptop 40 sucking. Anyways, <laughs> so um, here we go. So I went ahead and it performed the upgrade. All right. And now the secondary is rebooting. So the second that the secondary is up and posted, it is then going to negotiate it being the uh, primary so but before that happens obviously it has to reconnect to the cluster find itself and then report that it's been upgraded that it's going to take over and it should also gracefully okay uh, uh bleed out any kind of traffic that is on the primary so there's no interruption now that should only be true because i have seamless failed over turned on so if you guys watch my previous uh videos we have part of the session table being synchronized to our secondaries, all right? And the whole goal of that was to make sure that, uh, you know, that uh, if we did have a failover, then not all of the tunnels VPN-wise and all of our TCP connections would have to renegotiate. So, um, and there it is, all right? So now it's saying, waiting for the slave to become the new master. So this is what I mean by it is gracefully trying to dip out of the primary role, which it now just did. And now what used to be our primary is now upgrading itself 
and then once it's done upgrading, it should come back as a secondary. Now, the 40 gauge should be identical, so that should not be a big deal, okay? Uh, but if we look here, it looks like during the upgrade process, yeah, guys, we lost a single bloody packet. Did you guys see that? Yeah. If that's not cool, then you shouldn't be watching these videos because the FortiGate just did a firmware upgrade in a cluster and only lost a single, let me do a control C, a single packet while doing so. <laughs> okay, that is pretty darn impressive. All right, now what's going to happen is that the primary, the old primary, the FortiGate A, is going to come back with the correct firmware version and then come over as a secondary. Now, if we had our an, our override enabled and we had a higher priority number on that primary, it would also force a failover again when it joined the cluster. But you know what? We don't want that. So that's why in the video that I did beforehand, we turned all of that off. All right. So, and uh, you can see here, even though it says waiting for the upgrade, I mean, we have a primary already there and it's going to be FortiGate B. So, in the meantime, we should still get a login page here. Come on, buddy. I know you can do it. All right. See how it's saying, hey, I've never seen this FortiGate before. That's because it's the FortiGate B. And uh, there it is. So, um, pretty darn cool. All right. And even though the FortiGate A is still doing its thing, it's still upgrading the firmware, the FortiGate B had already upgraded itself and became the primary by losing a single packet. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to hang out <laughs> until that, until FortiGate A joins back into the HA cluster. All right, just to kind of do a proof of concept here. But as you can see here, guys, right? Uh, our primary is now B, and we did a firmware upgrade without having to see the 606, without having to um, lose really any uptime. So a single ICMP packet does not qualify as downtime, in my humble opinion. So, um, and like I said, if that's not cool, I don't know what is. All right, so that A should come back up at some point. All right, uh, hopefully. Let's take a look here, what it's doing. And now, for some reason, if it doesn't come back up, uh, it is, it's just slow. Remember guys, I have a really, really old laptop that's doing all of this, okay? Um, it shouldn't be a big deal because we already have a primary FortiGate that's handling all the, all the traffic. So, uh, it did come up though. So I'm just gonna go over to my um, system and my HA and I'm gonna confirm that, all right? So once again, guys, check mark, check mark. That is how you do a firmware upgrade and an HA uh, cluster. And uh, yeah, I mean, we did it without even losing any downtime. So the FortiGate's pretty darn cool like that. So uh, this was requested, so I went ahead and did it. So I hope you guys found that helpful. And I will just see you guys for the, for the next video. So all right, take care.